Hello and welcome to another video. A finite state machine or finite state device is completely defined by its state equations. We have two finite state machines, one on the right and one on the left. What can we say about these by looking at the equations? First of all, we notice that the one on the left has no inputs. How can we be so sure of that? Well, look at it carefully and you will see that A, B and C are on the left hand side, three equations, one for A, one for B and one for C. And the only thing that appears on the right hand side of the equal sign is the letters A, B and C. So because it has no inputs, it is going to be a cyclical device. That is, it's going to transition from one state to the next on each transition of the clock pulse. Now, let us look at the next one. Well, we see that that has X and Y on the right-hand side of the equal sign and not on the left. So the presence of letters on the right hand side of the equation which are not also on the left indicates that the device has inputs. Those variables are automatically inputs. And once we have inputs we can have non-cyclical behavior. It might have a cycle or it might not, but the presence of the inputs allows us to have a device which has non-cyclical behavior. The finite state machine on the right side also has an output equation, Z. The finite state machine on the left side has no outputs specified, meaning then that the A, B, and C are the outputs of that device, but the one on the right, the A and B could as well be considered to be an output up to the discretion of the designer. We're going to fill out the table in stages. First, we deal with the A, T plus 1 which has two ones when A is a zero and B is a one. Then we go to the BT plus one, which has, first of all, two ones when both A and B are zero. Then when B and C are both one, we get those two ones. And then when A and B are both one, we only add one additional one. So the purple one in the seven position, one, one, one on the A, B, and C, is applies to both the B, C, and the A, B, as shown. Then we do the B bar C when B is a zero and C is a one. And then finally, we do the A bar, C bar, when both A and C are zero. So if it's not a one, then it has to be a zero. So we go throughout the table, putting in the zeros as shown. Then we now proceed to deal with the one on the right. Now this table, we have to put the inputs on the left with the present state and the output on the right with the next state. So we have our perfect, perfectly prepared table there and all we need to do is to put on the functions. So we notice that XA is a term of both the AT plus one and the BT plus one. So wherever X and A are both 1 in the table, we are going to put a 1, which is 
gives us those ones shown there. We then move to the X bar Y, which is going to put the ones for the AT plus 1 as shown, and the X bar B, which is going to put those four ones for the BT plus 1 as shown. For the Z, we have the X bar Y term, which puts those four ones, and we have the X bar B term, which puts those extra two ones as shown. So now we have to fill in the zeros. And uh, we have our two state tables and we're ready to go to the state diagram. We will start with the non-cyclical finite state device. So we start by drawing the four circles that represent the four states of A and B. You can see where I have written there in the yellow. The A is always the first and the B is always the second when writing the binary states within the circle. So each circle represents a state and the state of the two flip-flops A and B is written into the circle as shown. So if we pick any one of the rows on the table, there you have it. We have picked a row and marked it with the purple. And we can see that the A and B is transitioning from 0, 1 to 1, 1. I have circled it to show you the present state would be 0, 1. And the next state would be 1, 1. Which is why the arc joining the two states has an arrow. Every arc connecting two states has to have an arrow showing the direction of the transition of the state at the next clock pulse. Now on the arc we write the state of the inputs and the output separated by a da uh, line uh, as shown, a slash line as shown. And also we keep them in order so X and Y would represent the first and second digit and on the other side of the slash for the outputs we only have one so we would have Z but if there was more than one outputs we would represent them in the alphabetical order that they appeared in the output so if we have W X Y and Z as the output we will have right 1011 and the first one will relate to the W, then the next one, the X, and the Y, and the Z. So we keep them in order. So having seen how we fill out one row of the truth table, we are going to do them progressively one by one. Now what we have done there is we have taken all the rows that relate to state A, B, 0, 0. If you look, we have four rows in the table where the present state of A and B are 0, 0. And three of them, the next state is also 0, 0. So by comparing what you see there in the green arrows with the actual uh, arcs, you will see that only when we are going from state 0, 0 to 2, which happens in the second green arrow right above the purple circles, the 0, 0 goes to a 2, and the input x and y is 0, 1, and the output z is a 1. So we've used the colors to constructively show what we're doing. And the next one we're going to do step by step. So we've got a little lilac arrow there. And that um, is put on for you with the 
state of the x, y, and the z. Then we have another one, and another one, and we have completed the next state. Notice that each state has four arrows moving away from it, corresponding to the four possible combinations of the x and the y variable. So we're going to do state two. First we have one, then the next, then the next, and the next. And state three, starting at the top. One, two, three, and four. So you should be able to figure out what's going on with that. And now we have drawn our state diagram, which shows how the states transition according to what input we have on for each transition from state to state. All right, so we start now with the other cyclical finite state device. Whenever we start with a cyclical finite state device, we can start from any row, but we prefer to start from the zero since it's a logical place to start. And we see that the zero transitions to three. So we've drawn the zero and the three state and connected them with an arrow going from zero to three. We now move to the three. It's no, we don't move to the one. We move to the three. And we see that the three transitions to six. One, one, zero, which is six. So we just draw one more state. And we put an arrow going to it. So that shows that the three is going to the six. We now look at the six. And we see that the six is going to two. So we add another state and arrow to go to two. Then we look at the, the two and we see that it's going to five. So we draw the five state and put the arrow from two to five. Now we look at the five and we see that the five is going to one. So we put the five to one. And then we look at the one and we see that the one is going back to three. So we simply have to put in an arrow to connect that back to three. Now when we look at our state diagram, we see that we only have six of the states shown. So we look down the uh, table and we see that we're missing four and seven. So we look at four and we see that four goes to zero. Four goes to zero. So we draw in the four and we put an arrow to the zero. And then finally we look at seven and we see that seven is going to two. So we add the seven and we put an arrow to the two. So we've completed now all eight of the states. And uh, our diagram is finished. And we notice that the cycle is 3, 6, 2, 5, 1. Now you might say, where do we know how to start a cycle? If you had said that the cycle was 6, 2, 5, 1, 3, you would also be correct. Or if you said that the cycle was 2, 5, 1, 3, 6, you would also be correct. If you want to get in the habit of starting your cycle, writing it down from the lowest number, then we would have to say 1, 3, 6, 2, 5. But we're not going to fuss over that right now. Once you record all the states of your cycle in the correct order, you may feel free to start it from any number. Now, 
We see also that there are three states which are outside of the cycle because they come into the cycle, but there is no way to get back to them. If you look at the diagram, you will see that. Those are called unused states because they're not part of the cycle. So this one has unused states of 4, 0, and 7. If they're not in the cycle, then they have to be unused states. Now it's important to be able to get back to the cycle from the unused states so that if we accidentally end up in an unused state, and this can happen, our animal is considered to be self-correcting. The device is self-correcting if we are able to get back to our cycle. And clearly in this diagram, we are able to get to our cycle from any of the unused states. If we are in 7, the next state is 2. If we're in four, we go to zero first, and then we go from zero into the cycle at three. So the definition of self-correcting would be that the unused states eventually return to the cycle. Or basically the diagram is a connected diagram with arrows connecting everything together. If we had an unused state, which was not coming back to the cycle, our diagram would consist of two separate parts. It would not be one diagram, but two. We would have the cycle diagram, and then we would have another little diagram somewhere off on the side where we have states that are not returning to the cycle, in which case the device would not be self-correcting. Well, it's been a very long video. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.